It's the beginning part of the shad season and I'm starting to get prepared to do some hiking. I've got a group hike in a couple of weeks. I'll likely start uh, doing some solo hikes here shortly. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do an inventory of my backpack. Uh, see whether I needed to replace anything that I consumed last year, see if I need to add anything, remove anything. So I thought I'd bring you along and let you take a look at what I typically have in my backpack when I go hiking to do some shad fishing. All right, first off, we have the pack itself. Um, this is a Sandpiper of California. I believe it's the bug out bag model. It's a camo, digital camo. I'm not crazy about the color of it, but I picked it up on sale. I think it was normally $100. I uh, picked it up uh, last year for, I think, 60 Ended up liking this bag a lot last year. It's a large bag. It's expandable. The main uh, compartment is expandable and huge. Definitely a larger bag uh, and probably larger than I need for just a typical day hike. But tons of room and tons of options. It also fits me very, very well. Great lumbar support with the, the waist strap. Um, adjustable shoulder straps. There's some support bars in it, uh, aluminum support bars, I believe. And, uh, you know, a pocket that you can carry a water bladder if you're into that. I'm, I'm not. I think they always taste like plastic, so I usually carry a couple of Nalgene. So you'll find uh, some little uh, cheap carabiners on the pack that I use to hang a uh, Nalgene, 32 ounce Nalgene bottle typically. And then I might uh, carry something larger in the bag itself if, I, uh, if I'm having a longer hike. The other thing that I like about this pack is there's actually um, kind of a sling uh, strap on it so you can throw it over a shoulder real quick if you're uh, you know, running and gunning and you're moving around. Uh, I don't have to get it strapped up on my back if I'm just fishing and I'm going to move 50 yards or something downriver. So this bag itself weighs five pounds, eight ounces. There's probably lighter bags out there, but this works for me. So on the outside of the bag, we've got some molly webbing that helps expand the bag. You can add uh, additional pouches. Uh, I typically just carry uh, a fixed blade knife attached to the outside of this. And if I'm going to bring my switch rod, I take it out of the, the large rod tube and uh, just keep the, the cloth cover on it wrapped up, tie up the top and then I lash that to the molly webbing here. Uh, if I'm gonna bring my single hand rod as well, uh, I'll typically bring the rod tube and attach it here just with some zip ties. So I have a full rod tube on the bottom hanging here, switch rod kind of hanging up here, uh, attached to the, the molly webbing. So I'll typically hike out with all my gear on my back, get to the river, put my waders on, get the knife off my pack, hook it to my belt, uh, rig up my rods and then the the bag you know kind of throw it off to the side I can pick it up as I run and gun so right here uh, there's an outside zipper this typically just uh, is where I store my keys and wallet that way I can put them in there at the beginning of the hike and I'm not in and out of that pouch that way I'm not losing my wallet or keys the next zippered pouch here I'll go ahead and open that up we can take a look at what we, what I have inside so first off in this uh, web zipper here just a, a bit of Germex hand sanitizer and also some Rebel uh, Sun and Bug. This is a, an SPF 15 and also bug repellent. Always good to have on you. I also carry a small Swiss Army knife, uh, fishing edition, just you know, basic multi-tool. This is a bag of, uh, I think, 10 feet of toilet paper. Never know when duty calls. Over here, I just have a basic rain poncho. I use these every single year. Uh, it's one of the kind of one-time use uh, ponchos, a glorified trash bag with the hoodie, but they work, they keep you dry, keep you warm. But once you use it, toss it, replace it with a, a new one because you can never get them folded quite properly. So behind that, I just have a small signal mirror and I have a old hotel key that has some duct tape, probably 10, 12 feet of duct tape wrapped around it. Always good to have duct tape on you. Helps repair packs, repair rods even. Uh, you can use them to bandage wounds, etc. So good, good to have duct tape on you. And this next web zipper, just a basic compass and whistle. Now on the main pouch in this uh, area, I have just a, a headlamp. Usually carry one or the other. Um, generally this guy, it's a cheaper model, super light. Okay, for the next zipper pouch, uh, I have orange. 
zipper pulls on there and that helps me easily figure out where my first aid kit is or easily tell somebody else where the first aid kit is. So uh, orange uh, designates where the first aid kit is. So if I unzip that, you're also going to see the first pouch here has an orange zipper pull as well. Uh, so this is where my first aid kit is stored. Attached to that, I also have a small pill case. Uh, this has got some meds in it to help me if I was to fall into AFib. I've had AFib before, so I carry my prescriptions to make sure that uh, I can slow my heart rate down uh, and get me back in rhythm, hopefully, if this happened when I was out in the wilderness, uh, and an aspirin to thin my blood. If you take prescription drugs, I highly recommend that you carry some with you out into uh, the wilderness in case something happens, you have them, you have quick access to them. So I go ahead and unzip this, got my first aid kit. This is also a basic trauma kit. So this isn't just a boo-boo kit and it's not just a bunch of band-aids. This is a, you know, a basic trauma kit. Uh, we could treat some pretty severe bleeding. Um, and I'll go ahead and break this down so you can take a look at what I carry in it. This is what I probably consider the most important thing in my pack. It's also the heaviest uh, item that lives in my pack. Now obviously I'll be adding things to it to bring out fishing, uh, fly reels, maybe lunch, some additional water, etc. But as far as the item that lives in my pack, this is the heaviest and I choose that weight uh, because I'd rather be prepared than not. So here I have my first aid slash trauma kit broken down and we'll walk through what each thing is. So here I just have some moleskin and a couple different sizes, help treat blisters on your feet. Uh, blisters can be super painful when you're hiking, so always good to carry that. Some mace bandages wrap a sprained ankle or can be also used as a pressure bandage in combination with some galls. Here we have a space blanket, can be used to uh, help treat shock. Over here, we just have some tampons. These can be used to pack small wounds and of course, helpful to have with you if your wife's coming with you on a hike. Here I've got my boo-boo kit. Uh, this is just some band-aids of different sizes along with individual packs and neosporin. So here I have my med kit, uh, typical stuff here, uh, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, Imodium, allergy medicine, antihistamine, etc. Here are just a couple extra deep wood towelettes uh, if their bugs are bad. Right here we've got different size gauze pads, help stop bleeding. Some med tape wrapped around an old hotel card and a razor blade that is protected within some cardboard and taped up. Now on this side I have uh, my trauma kit. So of course gauze for wound packing and an Israeli bandage for pressure bandaging and then uh, a tourniquet if there was a, an, an artery bleed. A lot of people don't consider trauma kits in their first day. They just kind of keep a boo-boo kit. And it's something you really should consider if you're, you're heading out into the woods. We are hiking out into mixed use areas where there are hunters. Uh, personally, I'm a carry holder, so I carry a firearm most times and accidents happen, right? So having a way to treat uh, major bleeding can save your life. Another consideration is that we're basically inserting ourselves into the food chain, right? We're hiking out into the woods. There can be feral pigs, there can be bears, and let's not forget about alligators. So again, puncture wounds, uh, you know, be having a way that you can treat animal attacks, something like that. It's a good idea to have uh, a trauma kit with you. Even the bag itself can be used to treat a, a sucking chest wound that can be taped over the wound. Okay, and the secondary pouch here, is my water filtration kit. And we'll go ahead and take a look through it. So here I have my water filtration kit broken down and you can take a look at what I have. Um, the filter is a Sawyer Mini. Uh, this is a straw type. You can hook the straw up, <clears throat> attach it to this soft um, refillable bag and then just literally sip right from it. You squeeze through it and, and drink right from the bag. Um, that works great out uh, west and where there's clean water, but I think where uh, we might use this system on the St. John's River with all of the, the cattle out there and the water running off the pasture, I wouldn't just depend on that. So um, what I would actually do is, is use this potentially to fill up with water from the river and squeeze it through the filter into an algae and then uh, drop an aqua tab or a K-9 tab 
in into there wait 30 minutes and uh, then you've got clean processed water chlorinated water um, in addition to that i have the uh, sawyer cleaning plunger that helps you back wash the filter uh, if it gets dirty and stops uh, you know getting a decent flow through it and in addition to that i kind of have my electrolyte pack over here this is just some some salt and magnesium and this is something personal for me um, I carry just in case I had uh, some heart palpitations or something. I need to stay hydrated. I need to make sure my electrolytes are in check so I don't end up in AFib. All right, so we'll go ahead and open up the, the large pouch here. In here, I've got a, a dry bag. Typically, I'm going to throw uh, some spare socks, maybe some spare boxers, a clean shirt. Uh, it helps at the end of the day if you got wet or muddy or something and you want to make a long hike back in to have dry socks, dry boxers, whatever. All right, next I've got a, a sole bivy bag. If I had to hunker down overnight, spend the night in the woods, I'd rather have some basic shelter than not. This will keep you warm, keep you dry. Uh, you may not be super comfortable compared to a tent and a nice thermorest pad, but if you had to spend the night out, uh, you know, out in the woods because you're injured or, or for whatever reason, good to always have some basic shelter. Last, I have a small uh, tinder kit. This tinder kit just has some basic lint, uh, paper towels, uh, petroleum jelly soaked cotton balls, some small kindling, etc., a Bic lighter, and also a small tea light. As a backup, I also have a light my fire fire starter here. This is the main compartment of this bag. This is a huge uh, compartment, huge area, and this is generally where I carry my waders. So uh, I always have a, a, just a large trash bag here that I can throw my waders in, keep the bag from getting dirty or wet. Uh, in addition to that, I usually carry a soft Nalgene. These are lighter than the typical Nalgene, so once you're done with it, it lightens the pack. And just a small chamois if I need to dry off. Like I mentioned earlier, if you need some extra room, you can actually expand the main compartment with this zipper here. And it really just about doubles the, the overall space of the bag. It's a very large bag. Thanks for joining me. I hope if you're planning on doing some hiking for Shad that this helps get you prepared.